What we're going to be talking about today is a subject in magic that I've been interested in for a very long time. However, only recently I started to realize again how important this thing actually is and how the greatest masters of magic have built their careers on these principles purely. The reason why Slidini was so great, why Goshman was so great, why Ramsey, Tamaris and also Fernan were such great magicians is very based on understanding these concepts. The concept I'm talking about is the hierarchy of vision. Understanding what in the field of vision becomes more interesting for a person and how to make people's eyes look where you want them to look. Tommy Wonder would title this as redirection, but we're not necessarily gonna be looking at that. We're just gonna look at what for a person might be more important to look at. And for that, we've made five rules. The first rule, number uno, is they look where you look. The audience doesn't know what to expect when they're watching a magic trick. So you're taking them through the experience. You're guiding them exactly to where to look. Or rather your eyes are doing this. Knowing this, you want to make sure that they still perceive a clear effect. But at the same time, you don't want to look at your hands when you're doing a secret movement. Even if your side steal or your pass or your palm is perfect, you would rather not have them look at your hands because you might flash one day, but even your hands might look a little bit unnatural. You don't want them to get that feeling that you did something. For that reason, we've done a, we've done a peek, we go back down, we look up, we relax with the body, we look up at someone and we can ask them a question. We can look at them, they're gonna look at you, talk with you, and in that motion, we can do the movement. They look where you look. It's also why it's very important that when we're doing, for example, a French drop, we're following the hand with our eyes and with our body in such a way that we project with our entire being that the coin is right there where we want them to believe the coin is. Magic is not only a physical visual thing, but also a very emotional thing. Rule number two, they follow what moves. So in the event that for example, we're doing a side steal or we're palming a card from the deck, we don't want to freeze the hand that's holding the deck and move away the hand. Now rather we would first want to move the deck somewhere, maybe to the table, to a pocket for someone to hold or to put in someone's hand and then we move the card away. And this is important to realize also with a coin. And it's an it's an argument whether we should take or put because when we're taking we're following the hand that should be important the empty hand sort of but they believe there's a coin there leaving the dirty hand behind whereas as we're putting the dirty hand is moving away do we want to take or do we want to put good question a lot of people in this argument say we would rather want to take because in that case we're following the hand and leaving the dirty hand out of vision rule number three be interested in something a friend of mine says that it's better to try to be interested in something than to try to be interesting for your audience. Because when you're interested in something, you automatically become interesting, but so does that object. And looking at something, becoming interested in it, can allow you in some sense to have the audience look there as well. And that can free up your hands or whatever you want to do in the shadow to do a move to ditch something but there is something we have to consider with this thing. the thing that we're going to be interested in has to make sense as well because if we're interested in something and then we leave it completely behind the audience is going to feel betrayed and they realize that they've been looking at something where you wanted them to look which which might be cool but they know that they could never see the moment of magic because they had no chance they were looking somewhere else so for that reason be interested in something but make damn well sure that that thing you're going to use and it's going to make sense. This is something Tommy Wonder talks a lot about in the books of Wonder. You should check them out if you haven't read them. The first book is great, the second one as well. And they have some great essays in there on redirection. Rule number four, point of interest. So anything that's closer or that's higher becomes more interesting. So let's say we want to make a coin vanish. A way to make, to make that hand more important is we could take the coin and then we could move the hand up higher showed before the finish it's going to finish or we're palming out a card we could move the deck towards them because it comes closer to them biologically we should we become interested in that and the eyes are going to follow it first of all because it moves second of all because it becomes closer to you so it becomes more interesting final point point number five what the eyes see the heart must believe and this is not necessarily a point for them where to look, but this is rather why we do it. We don't want them to be looking at the secret action because if we do something weird, something strange, they're gonna realize we did something. 
They might not see it, but they might feel it in their bones, making sure that the eyes didn't see it, but the heart definitely doesn't believe it. Whereas if they're not looking at it and we appear to have done nothing, it's pure magic. Like I said before, magic is also an emotional thing, not purely a visual thing. Now, further references, if you want to study any books on this subject for the hierarchy of vision, I would recommend The Five Points of Magic by Juan Tamariz, because he, he dedicates a great deal about the eyes, where they should look, how they should hold tension, and what they should do. Of course, The Books of Wonder by Tommy Wonder, because Tommy goes into great detail about how to redirect someone's attention. And how to make sure your audience doesn't feel betrayed. Another book I love on this subject which has taught me a great lot is The Book of Secrets by John Carney. And that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and have a great day.